Um, in those days, the, the nearest thing that they could understand to a psychological problem would be to say that somebody is inhabited by bad spirits, because it just seemed to be the way of things. I mean, is, is, is I mentioned before that um, Lilith um, was the creature from Jewish mythology uh, who was in fact responsible for child death and child illness. Although we called upon Ochoninos to protect the child and cut it down, Lilith is the haunter of the dark places. Anywhere there is illness and disease, <coughs> she and her children haunt. And if you remember, in the villages, is your toilet system it's more like a latrine, a hole in, in the ground somewhere, yeah, because flushing toilets weren't part of the situation. But we had the, our laws within the community were to keep yourself clean. And if somebody went down with stomach upsets uh, and proved a deadly case, they were seen as somebody who had been touched by a spirit that wished to kill. But because it's, if you like, they knew to a certain level that illness was brought in by disease, by, by dirt, by um, uncleanliness of one kind or another. Uh, and therefore, if they had been strict with themselves, something else had caused the illness. Something else had brought disease in. Somebody else or something else had touched them with the illness of filth. Filth being that situation had created the illness for them, for which they either died or they were suffering very badly. There's a strong tradition of uh, you know the spirit world of you know past um, people coming back as spirits and mm -hmm. uh, dialogue. You know it's it's recorded in Tanakh. It's very interesting because some thirty years ago, thirty no more than thirty years ago, back in in the sixties, I did a year working at Belgrave Square, off and on, um, with mediums, asking about Jewish clientele, because then there were a lot more Jews involved in spiritualism, and wanting to know more about spiritualism, and using spiritualism, um, than the community would admit at the time, there are still many Jews who are involved in spiritualism, spiritual healing, um, as a way of helping other people. And there are still working Jewish spiritualists today. Um, and with, with them, it is because, I think, they know that there is an element of the divine. And they perhaps see the way of curing other people through the use of perhaps spirits that are around them or that they believe are around them. Um, we are a people who have had a belief, a very strong belief in the divine for thousands and thousands of years and although the shape of ritual has changed and elements of religious practice the belief that we are protected <coughs> has been there all the time and therefore we believe in agencies that are sent from heaven to help otherwise there are elements of evil which are the masikim, the, the imps that are sent to afflict us. Um, the masikim are an interesting group of characters some attached to Lilith and her children, but they are a later development in Jewish philosophy because sometime way back, way back in Jewish learning, some of our storytelling rabbis realized when people were asking questions about illness, about things, they needed a simple explanation. But what they did was to take a belief and change it slightly. Because in the Chumash, we are told that because God rested, 
we then created Shabbos. He created a day for a rest. With the Mazikim, we have the tradition whereby God seeing what had happened with Adam, and he'd been kicked out of the garden, he and Eve would have a very hard time breaking the ground. God thought in generosity that he would create a servant race for the, for the human beings and began to create that, human, that race of servants for human beings who were to be the Mazikim. But a human being has three elements to its personality, Ruach, Nefesh and Neshama. That's what makes a total human being. Unfortunately, when he created the Mazikim, he began making bits and pieces. So, in fact, there would be one, two, three, four, with two parts. One, two, three, four, with one part. But none of them he got you know, sufficient together to make three parts. He never made any of the Mazikim whole. Then, as he worked on them, he realised Shabbos would be coming in. And he stopped because he didn't want to break the Shabbos. So you can see it's a later development in narrative styles of the community. And for Mazi Kim, these little lost souls of being made at the time, knowing what they were actually made for to help mankind in a servile way, with the original walkaways. They got off the bench where they'd been created and they wandered off into the world.